welcome to RPTV Weekly News Show. My name is Fred Alvarado and my co-hosts are Murphy Brown and Javin Hawk. We present news that impacts on Regent Park and the surrounding areas. In this episode, we present the following news for the week of February 11th to February 18th. SDP to hold in-person community meeting and celebration event. Enbridge Gas and Toronto Community Housing Corporation celebrate partnership to enhance quality of life. TCHC is investing in our diversity scholarship program for Regent Park youth. Celebrating Black History today and every day. Number of people in Ontario needing mental health support increasing in surveys suggest. Toronto City Council supports community-led solutions to respond to mental health crisis calls. Events and jobs in Regent Park. SDP to hold in-person community meeting and celebration event. The Social Development Plan, the SDP, is a community-wide initiative designed to build social cohesion and inclusion among all the groups and residents in Regent Park. The aim of the SDP Planning Committee is to coordinate all the activities of the various working committees involved in the Social Development Plan. The February 11, 2022 meeting of the Stakeholders Planning Committee, chaired by Abraham Afra, a resident of Regent Park, focused on the question of whether to join the scheduled SDP Stakeholders Table in March with a community celebration of the SDP. At the meeting, it was explained to members by Adonis Huggins, an agency member of Focus Media Arts Center, that the SDP stakeholders table generally meets four times yearly to hear about SDP activities and to make decisions related to the SDP. Since the pandemic, these meetings have been held online. It was also explained that the SDP Community Building Events Committee is organizing an in-person community celebration of the SDP that is scheduled to be held on March 23rd, 2022 at the Daniels Spectrum. The event will feature food, vendors, and live entertainment, as well as an orientation of the SDP. Adonis Huggins proposed that rather than organize two separate SDP events, that the SDP stakeholders meeting and the SDP celebration be joined together in one event. After much discussion, a decision was made to join the SDP stakeholders table with the SDP celebration. It was also agreed to invite Mayor John Tory and City Councilor Kristen Wong Tam. The SDP event will be held on March 23rd 2022. The remainder of the February 11th SDP Planning Committee meeting, facilitated by Ismail Afra, another resident of Regent Park, was spent on continuing previous discussions about the purpose and activities of the SDP. Enbridge Gas and Toronto Community Housing Corporation celebrate partnership to enhance quality of life. Enbridge Gas and Toronto Community Housing Corporation, along with the Minister of Energy, Todd Smith, celebrated a decade-long partnership that has successfully decreased energy costs, increased comfort for residents, and advanced the pathway to achieving net zero emissions in Ontario. The partnership was formed more than a decade ago and in 2020 and 2021 alone, Enbridge Gas provided rebates totaling over $1 million. The rebates supported 26 projects involving a combination of measures, including high efficiency boilers, ventilation upgrades, building controls, 
and modern heating and cooling systems at various locations throughout Toronto. This initiative also benefits tenants in terms of comfort and cost, particularly as the COVID-19 pandemic forced tenants to be in their homes more than ever and caused increased pressure on building systems and utility consumption. Minister Smith congratulated Enbridge Gas and TCHC on their conservation efforts as the province continues advancing its agenda to create a greener future for Ontarians. Ontario is proud to have one of the cleanest energy systems in the world with more than 90% of our electricity generation coming from non-emitting sources and that's thanks to our diverse supply mix that we have. Our government recognizes the need for ongoing partnerships and innovative options to continue to reduce emissions and protect the environment. And I'm pleased to see a major organization in the energy sector, such as Enbridge Gas, leading the way, working with Toronto Community Housing Corporation to reduce the corporation's carbon footprint. Through Enbridge Gas's affordable housing multi-residential program, TCHC received more than a million dollars in incentives in 2020 and 2021 across 26 different projects, enabling them to implement energy efficiency upgrades across their social housing stock. And this helped to both reduce emissions and reduce energy costs, so win-win all the way around. Jack Sharma, President and CEO of Toronto Community Housing Corporation said, an important part of our capital plan is investment to make buildings more energy efficient while improving tenant comfort. At Toronto Community Housing, we're not just focused on delivering housing for tenants, we're focused on delivering comfortable homes and sustainable communities. These are communities in which people are raising their children, they're growing older, they're retiring, and there's an incredible sense of pride. The savings that we recoup through the program, they're reinvested in the communities in which our tenants live, and they focus on helping us deliver our vision of quality homes and vibrant communities where people are proud to live and work. TCHC's investing in our diversity scholarship program for Regent Park youth. The investing in our diversity scholarship program recognizes the commitment of young people involved in anti-racism, diversity initiatives, and in building safe and healthy communities such as Regent Park and the surrounding areas. Between the cost of tuition, books, food, and transportation, it can be tough for many students to find the money to cover the cost of post-secondary school. Regent Park youth can apply today for the Investing in Our Diversity Scholarship. A scholarship recipient can receive up to a $4,000 scholarship award towards tuition fees for the first year of post-secondary education or training. That is college, university, trade school, or apprenticeship. Opportunity for second year scholarships of up to $4,000 to be applied directly to tuition fees. If you attend one of the following institutions, Ryerson University, the University of Toronto, York University, Humber College, George Brown College, Seneca College, or OCAD University. Who is eligible? Youth who are attending post-secondary school in 2022-2023. 29 years old or younger, as of May 31st, 2022. Not a previous recipient of the Investing in Our Diversity Scholarship. Toronto Community Housing Tenant. Entering first year of post-secondary school. Returning post-secondary student. Able to demonstrate a need for financial assistance. Canadian citizen or permanent resident. Successful scholarship recipients are selected from among Toronto's up and coming diverse young leaders. Each recipient 
must have made a strong contribution to their communities in promoting diversity, equity, and anti-racism dialogue. Prospective applicants can attend one info session to learn more about the benefits of the investing in our diversity scholarships and how to make their applications stand out. The information session will take place on Wednesday, February 16th, 2022. The Angela Provo and Kwesi Adupoku 2021 scholarship recipients shared what the scholarships meant to them and how the program supports their future aspirations. My name is D'Angelo Provo. I am 18 years old. I am attending Ryerson University for child and youth care. Growing up, I would see like some of my friends get lost and distracted, losing friends and losing relationships with people. There's a lot of trials and tribulations that you face living in the Regent Park community, but it also motivated me to continue to strive for greatness because when you continue to push yourself through hard times, you get to see yourself in a different frame. My name is Kwase Rupoku. I'm from Toronto, but namely the Jane Finch community. I'm currently completing my Master's of Public Policy and Administration at Ryerson. I hope to pursue fields in the area of social and economic policy to promote change I want to see in my community. Getting the scholarship was very emotional for me. It really showed me that all the hard work and effort that I put into the application, it really worked. Don't be ashamed to tell people where you're from, what you've experienced, because people are here to listen and give back, and this is what TCHC did for me. Opportunities like the Diversity Scholarship give areas like this a chance to actually see students succeeding and give students the opportunity to believe in themselves. I love my community. I love giving back to my community. I give back at many organizations, whether it's being on the youth council to just get ideas out there or just like simple things like making sandwiches to give to the homeless, volunteering at organizations within the community like Kiwanis Boys and Girls Club, Dixon Hall. It really gives an opportunity for you to see yourself making change and being a change maker. I just feel like sometimes having that a little bit of optimism, it's giving me the courage just giving me the confidence to continually improve my situation. It's giving me the motivation to want to create a better life for my family. In a society that we continue to realize is systemically created to kind of put people like us down, that little bit of optimism, that investment in education, that ability to dream bigger, I feel like those are the things that will help people like us continue to make it. Celebrating Black History today and every day. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau issued the following statement on Black History Month. It is a time to honor the legacy of Black Canadians, past and present, and to recognize and celebrate the significant contributions they continue to make to our country. This year, the Government of Canada's Black History Month theme is February and Forever, celebrating Black history today and every day. It invites us to pay tribute to and learn more about the important roles that Black Canadians have played in building and shaping a more prosperous, diverse, and inclusive Canada. Number of people in Ontario needing mental health support increasing, surveys suggest. More people in Ontario are accessing mental health support than at any other time during the COVID-19 pandemic, a new survey suggests. The Canadian Mental Health Association poll indicated 24% of respondents have sought help for mental health challenges compared to 17% last winter and 9% almost two years ago. Camille Queneville, the association CEO, said the survey results are worrying as they indicate the mental health of those living in the province is not improving. We've conducted four polls during this pandemic because we wanted to get a sense of how people are doing nearly two years in, she said in a written statement. Needless to say, we are very concerned that the numbers are going in the wrong direction. The poll survey 
1,001 Ontario adults between January 10 and January 17 and carries a margin of error of 3.1%. In the last survey, nearly half 48% of respondents said their mental health has worsened since the pandemic began, compared to 36% at the start of the pandemic. 32% of those surveyed say they are struggling with high levels of stress and 31% have high levels of anxiety. Accessing mental health support appears to be a challenge as 43% of survey respondents indicated it was difficult to get help up from 37% at the start of the pandemic. About 65% of those surveyed said mental health supports are helpful down from 77% near the beginning of COVID-19. Toronto City Council supports community-led solution to respond to mental health crisis calls. Toronto City Council approved implementing the City of Toronto's community crisis support service pilots, including the selection of four community partners who will deliver the service to be piloted in four areas of the city starting this spring and summer. The new community crisis support service will provide a community-led solution to respond to mental health crisis calls and wellness checks. All four pilots will be geographically based, operating in areas of Toronto where apprehensions under Ontario's Mental Health Act and 911 calls for people in crisis are the highest. The new service, led in partnership with four community partners, Taibu Community Health Centre, Gerstein Crisis Centre, Two-Spirited People of the First Nations, and the Canadian Mental Health Association Toronto will launch in two phases with the pilots in the Northeast and Downtown East anticipated to start by March 2022. And those in the Northwest and Downtown West by June 2022. The pilots will seek to better support community health, wellness, and safety by introducing an alternative model of crisis response that is community-led, person-centered, trauma-informed, and focused on harm reduction. Mayor John Tory said, today, Council furthered the tangible solid steps forward we are making on our commitment to develop and implement a response model for people in distress, which has a focus on mental health professionals as opposed to a police-only response. The introduction of these pilots will mark a real change for a lot of people in our city and brings us closer to our shared goal of a more effective and compassionate response for those who are in distress. And now we go with events and jobs in Regent Park community with Javin Hawk. Thank you. Now for events coming up in Regent Park. Tish Binzaghi, founder of Born Resilient Youth Services and child worker, will be facilitating the event Every day is Black History on Thursday, February 17th via Zoom from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Topics of discussion for this free event will include an overview of racism and privilege in Canadian culture, the impact of trauma on the Black community, and ways to move forward and foster holistic healing. For more information, email Soraya at TCCLD Dot org or register for the event on Eventbrid, link in description. Black History Month event, Our Roses That Grew From Concrete. The Center for Advancing the Interests of Black People, the Center, hosts a virtual Black History Month open to all tenants. 
Join a virtual celebration to honor the contributions of cur current and former black tenants who have fostered positive change and planted the seeds of long lasting impact in our communities. A meeting link and telephone number will be provided to those who register at the center at torontohousing.ca. The event will take place on Sunday, February 27, 2022, from 3 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. The first 75 people to register th for the event will be having dinner delivered to their homes through a food catering service. Every person who registers will be entered into a draw to win a raffle prize. To register, email the center team at the center at torontohousing.ca or call Iman Duria at 437-220-2704. TNG is offering in-person and virtual programs designed according to the needs of newcomer women and their families. TNG's new Women Settlement Program will support women newcomers at every step of their settlement voyage and is focusing on building women-focused community connections in order to thrive in Canada. For this, there will be a weekly online meeting on Mondays and Thursdays from 4.30 p.m. to 6 p.m. on Zoom. These meetings will encompass community events, a conversation circle, and physical and mental well-being workshops. If you are a newcomer woman and have questions about housing, healthcare, banking systems, immigration processes, children's schooling, and more, this is the space for you. For more information and to register, please contact Sohelia Bonhi at 416-455-0643 or email by sbonhi at tngcs.org. RiseHelps.ca supports entrepreneurs that self-identify as having mental health and addiction challenges with business education that supports their businesses thrive. RISE offers free eight-week programs to youth between 6, 16 to 29 and provide business education, coaching, and a $300 startup grant upon completion of the program. This is a national program open to youth across Canada. The program will start on February 23rd to April 13, 2022, Wednesdays at 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. ET. You can find the application in the link below. Now for employment training and opportunities. The Regent Park Film Festival is looking for someone to fill the position of executive director who will be responsible for leading the festival into its 20th anniversary. This is a full-time one-year contract with the opportunity to grow into permanent full-time with a salary of $70,000 with health insurance and working from the Daniel Spectrum building. Applicants that are current or former Regent Park residents, people who are identified as black, indigenous or people of color, as well as the LGBTQ2S plus women. People with disability or intersection of these identities will be given priority. Application deadline is February 18th at 11.59 p.m. To read more about the position, responsibilities, and applica application process, please visit rpff.ca slash jobs. That was all for events of Regent Park. Hope to see you there. And that's all for today's show. My name is Fred Alvarado, and my co-hosts are Murphy Brown and J.B. Hawk. We also like to thank our team of researchers that contributed for this week's show. And from our studios at Focus Media Arts Center, Thanks for watching and see you next week. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And when you do subscribe, hit the little notification bell so you never miss out on any of our content. If you'd also like more, you can find us on our other social media platforms. And if you want even more, you can look at our website.